So, so we will continue with Shri Shri Vila Pakusumanjali. With Shri Shri Vila Pakusumanjali, verse 69, commentary. Shri Jiva Goswami has written, May Radha and Mohana's sweetness attack my heart so that we may not go astray. Shri Krishna Sandarbha. Rasamai, can you repeat the words, please? Yes. Thank you. My dear friend, Rupa Manjari, when will I be able to see you with my mistress decorating her dearest one with flower ornaments right. in the kunja on the bank of her own lake. May Radha and Mohana's sweetness attack my heart so that we may not go astray. May Radha and Mohana, who are shining with a golden and bluish splendor whose eyes are dancing in, in a spotless festival of play who are anointed with endless cleverness in erotic artistry and who are greatly delighted by the nectarian fragrance of their mutual dearness. May they attack my mind in all respects with their sweetness. Shri Jiva Goswami means to say, May the indescribable sweetness of Radha and Mohana's combined form arise in my heart in such a way that there will not be the slightest other perception. The word akranta means may this sweet dual form not leave my heart even slightly. Rade, rade. Maybe we can stop just a little bit here, because Jiva Goswami is giving us so valuable instruction. And he's saying, may Radha and Mohan's sweetness, beauty, attack my heart. Because if they attack my heart with their loving playfulness, sweetness, and beauty, 
this heart and mind will not go astray. Because simply it will be not a place for anything else to come inside. If Radhika's beauty and Mohan's playfulness come in my heart, my heart, my chitta will be immediately like a sun full of their, <clears throat> their light. And this mind and heart will not accept other so-called lights from material world. Unless they come in my heart, it is always possibility that I become attractive for other lights. Because through these other lights, I will try to fulfill my desires, to find some happiness, but these lights are, are actually a great darkness. But if Radhika, my beloved Ishtade, and her Mohan, her Nagara, her lover, comes mercifully in my heart by the Kripa of their maidservants, maybe there is some hope for me. And in these words, Raghunatha is also praying to Rupa Manjari. Tulasi is praying to Rupa Manjari and saying, please, by your mercy, I will come in position to look, to witness, to relish how you expertly together with our Swamini, serve her beloved Mohan. I'm waiting, my dear friend, Rupa Manjar, for your mercy. Because the light of Radha Mohan's exchange of love is already present in your heart. So Sadaka is waiting patiently and patiently is waiting full Kripa from Guru Manjari and all other Manjaris that some drop, some ray, tiny ray of that light enlighten his heart. So Jiva Goswami is giving this beautiful instruction, please attack, don't hesitate, attack my heart. I opened, I prepared my heart for you. So please be merciful, attack my heart and fill it fully with your blue and golden brightness. Because your combined form is the only form which I want to relish. Combined form, Radha and Mohan, but they are also Gauranga, who is combined form. And his presence, like a golden avatar, in this Kali Yuga, is the most valuable gift that he appeared like a golden, shiny, most shiny avatar in this Kali Yuga, to attack the heart 
of Kali Yuga Jivas. And he did it personally, but also through his associates. I said something just for small introduction. And if someone wants to add, Yes, yes. Please, Udawaji. Tan Tandavat, Ranam Gurudev, Karanga, Jainanda, Maharaj. Um, maybe a, a kind of question. We, we speak so often about Madhurya, sweetness. It's a miraculous word. in Sanskrit and in English. And now, as you know, if you are in the Mungir Mandir, you know that <clears throat> at evening arti we, we sing, no, at lunch arti, sorry, we sing the song ma about Madura. Everything is sweet. Madura, Madura, Madura. Beautiful, beautiful song. We should sing it together sometime. But we don't ask very much what Madhurya is. So I wanted to ask you, uh, Karanga Gurudev, and suggest what that means. We talk about beauty in a philosophical way as something which has certain characteristics. And we all agree, yes, beautiful, beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset, beautiful picture. But Madhurya, sweetness, had something very, very special. And it's the kind of beauty that also reaches out from the thing to our hearts. It reaches into us, it pulls us together, it attracts us. It's beauty that's, that's light and agreeable, but it's beauty that makes relation. In the verse, it talks about attacking and I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this word, but it's certainly a kind of beauty that reaches right into our hearts and pulls us together. So we have a kind of beauty which is passive, and we have a kind of beauty called Madhurya, sweetness, which is active. Thank you. Good day. Please. Gurudev, you want to say something? So, like Kudavaji said, beauty and sweetness actually cannot be explained on philosophical way. It must be explained and understood and felt and relished only through the point of rasa. Only through the point of sweet relationship. Loving relationship. Maybe sometimes we can use some theoretical words and expressions but actually, Madhurya, Vrinda, can you mute? Can you mute? Yes. So this Madhurya can be relished only through loving relationship with pure feelings and pure love. And this Madhurya 
this kind of madhurya, most attractive madhurya, sweetness, is present in Vraja. And in the exchange of sweet relationship with Krishna, Vrajavasis, but specifically, specifically with Sri Radhika. So, because this is the relationship which Madhurya, in which Madhurya is the essence, we call it Madhurya Rasa. This sweetness gives juice. And in this juice, everyone can swim, and in this juice, everyone can relish. And this is the reason why Gurudev so many times is saying, forget philosophy, forget logic, arguments, because through this kind of words and arguments, you cannot explain beauty and sweetness. It should be relish through deep bhajan. Even Goswamis are aware that they cannot express fully through their written words what they experienced. They're giving hints, but if we really want to relish what they experience, that their experience becomes our experience, we have to expose our hearts to be attacked <laughs> with the arrows of mercy, with the arrows of Radha Mohan's beauty and sweetness. Then we cannot escape. Usually, when we see someone who is very beautiful, all senses are completely focused on that, automatically, without philosophy, without knowing anything. So, Jiva Goswami is saying, yes, I want the beauty and sweetness, Madhurya, 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 Madhura, attack my heart like a to shoot my heart like an arrow because in that way this heart will be conquered this mind will not be any more wild horse it will be controlled by love beauty and sweetness of Radha Mohan. And like you said, we are singing this song, Madura, Madura, Madura. But actually, in few songs also, other songs, when Acharyas don't know how to explain this Madura, they are repeating Madura, 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 Madura. I don't know better word than Madura to explain Madura, because it is so Madura. <laughs> So, I tried my best, most properly Gurudev will give other levels, because it's really so deep. And I just remember now, who is actually Madhura? When we say for the person that he is sweet, not because his beauty. He has so much beauty. No, because he is conquered by love to someone who loves him. He is so meek and humble to approach that person. And because of that loveliness, 
he is becoming Madhurya sweet. And Krishna very often, especially in Vrindavan, especially, especially in Vrindavan, takes this role to be conquered by love. And because of that, she's, he is Madhura. Madhura, Madhura. And Radhika makes him more Madhura, more Madhura, and more Madhura, unlimited Madhura. Because her love is unlimited. Maturam. <laughs> that, that. That. I'm sorry if I made any mistake. I'm sorry, really. Right. Right. Daiho Sham and Gore is blue and golden effulgence illuminates the whole of Vrindavan. Shiradika's right eye and Krishna's left eye are gladdened by wonderful movements due to meeting the beloved. And it is as if their indescribable bodily sweetness is dancing. Their bodies are adorned with limitless arts of ecstatic union, such as embracing and kissing and so on. Shri Shri Radha Mohana's bodies are anointed with mutual love, just as the bodies of other heroes and heroines may be anointed with kunkun. In other words, the hearts in which this sweetness that is gladdened by the nectar of mutual love shines, these hearts remain scented by the fragrance of Shri Shri Radha Mohana's love. I repeat one more. In other words, the heart in which this sweetness that is gladdened by the nectar of mutual love shines, these hearts remain scented by the fragrance of Shri Shri Radha Mohana's love. So we can hear here the script, description of the heart which is shines. Why it shines? Because it's gladdened with mutual love of Radha and Mohan. And this mutual love is filling the shiny heart with their madura. 
sweetness. Because there is no other thing in all worlds, spiritual and material, so sweet than mutual love between Radha and Moha. And Manjaris, who are staying beside and witnessing their mutual love. And serving their mutual love. And drowning in the ocean of their mutual love. And when this ocean covered Manjaris, they are very merciful and sprinkle other jivas with the drops of that sweetness of mutual love between Radha and Moha. And this is Gora Bhakta Vrita. All associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu receive this sweetness and then completely selflessly sprinkle all the world, all the jivas with the drops of this sweetness, Madhura. And these drops are, natural, are not ordinary drops and they are not the small drops. This is a nectarian drops and each drop is a, like an ocean. So only through bhajan, deep meditation, out of this material consciousness, absorbed in spiritual consciousness, sadaka maybe can enter in this drop and make his heart sweet and shiny. This is how I understand this sentence. In this eternal position, the devotees reach their goal of Nikunja Seva and its complete relish. Kunja Yuno Rati Keli Sidai. We are singing this song. Prabhupada mercifully gave us these drops of Madhura so that by meditation of Nikunja Yuno, Ratike, pastimes which are happening in Nikunja and which are full of Rati, ecstasy of mutual love between Radha and Krishna that are coming by Guru mercy through this song, through only this line, if we deeply meditate, I'm very convinced that we can attain perfection. Vande Guroshi Chara Naravinda. Oh, in this line, all Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta is written. Conclusions. Because the final ultimate goal is Nikunja Yuno Rati Keli 
pastimes full of rati, which are going in Ikunja, can be attained by Vande Guroshi, Chara Naravinda, taking the shelter of a spiritual loving master of love. Again, within these pastimes of meeting, there are again so many pastimes of separation because without this duality of union and separation, there would be no variety of relish. Therefore, so many situations like control of the superiors going and coming in and out of the house and peak within the kunjas occur. Janandaji, can you say something please or Gauravani? So, my, especially Braja Bindavan, Lada Moha Lira is always union and separation. As a place like Dwaraka, there may be some union separation, but the feeling is not like that, not like in Brindaba. So okay. we are leading their meetings so fresh. Every time they feel first time, first time meet. And uh, if they separate, they're so acute, so much pain in their heart. So when can I get see Madhava, Mohan? When can I get see Sri Radha? So always both feeling inside is so, so intense. So therefore our, our manjari can do something because if always union, then loving, love is not so much relishable. So they are in separation, manjari or kinkari is needed. Sometimes Radhika was waiting for Mohan. Sometimes Mohan does not come in time. Radhika is wondering what happened about Mohan. He's lost him, but he went to some other place. So sometimes Rupa sometimes Rati as a manjari looking for. Manjari all the saying, hey Swami, don't worry. I can bring your moha. Don't worry. So a Rupa or Rati or other manjari try to looking for uh, in a forest, sometimes kunja to kunja. And then they have some, they using some trick 
So, and for a meeting, so much feeling is coming. A separation, sometimes mind is coming. And meeting. And then Pranaya also coming, Raga, and then Anuraga also coming. And a separation in union, highest, highest stage is Mahababa is coming. And then Madanakya Mahababa is coming. So all these union and separation, Manjari, could to see it. Also, not only see, they can help Radha and Radha's Moha. This very sweet uh, leader, Mahaprabhu, give us opportunity to, to understand, to enter uh, in this this very, very sweet and shining, brightening, unbelievable sweetness. So this is only possible in Braja. And Gora Goranga Sundarapag also saying this Nikunja, this Nikunja is very, very confidential first time is Okari. This is the only we could see, we could enter only by the mercy of Shri Gurude. Thank you. Mike, yes. Yes, yes. Therefore, mm. Swamini is not satisfied in the pastimes. Beautiful Mohana's crown, pearl necklace, flower garland, and loincloth have all broken and fallen off. So Swamini says, Sundara, just look at your condition. Wait, let me decorate you. I have spoiled your looks and I will make you look nice again. Just sit down for a while. Then she tells Rupa Manjari, Rupa, come here. We're going to pick some flowers. Swamini takes Rupa along into the gardens and picks flowers of her own choice there. Then she comes back into the Kunja and along with Rupa Manjari begins to decorate her Prananat with ornaments made of these flowers. Tulasi stands on one side of the kunja 
and floats in oceans of bliss as she sees her Ishwari's expertise in service. She thinks, O oh Swamini, only through you such services are possible. Meanwhile, because of Swamini's touch, Mohana's body becomes adorned with ecstatic bodily symptoms, such as sweat drops, that obstruct Swamini's service. Swamini gives a hint to Tulasi to stand by her hero's side and to fan him. Because of Tulasi's fanning, Nagara's sweat drops dry up. But now, Tulasi begins to fan with such humorous expertise that the breeze she makes causes Swamini's clothes, like her blouse, to loosen. Mohana becomes agitated from seeing Radhika's sublime limbs half covered, and this causes him to engage in activities that obstruct Swamini's initial activities of dressing him. Tulasi softly giggles, but still she won't stop her expert fanning. Swamini then rebukes her with her meaningful glances as if saying, Tulasi, how naughty you are. How can I decorate my Nagara when you fan him like that? Fan him nicely so that he will sit down peacefully. After receiving Swamini's Sublime chastisement, Tulasi blissfully finds a new way to fan Mohana. Now she starts fanning in such a way that Swamini's bodily fragrance enters into Mohana's nostrils and his patience is destroyed once more. Blessed is this maid servant. Blessed is her servants. So this paragraph is explaining detail, sweet, detail of Lila, detail. And it's enough to meditate only on this part of Lila, because this is just the part, small, small part of Lila. I don't want to speak about that. I just want to say and to point out that this expertise which Tulasi is performing in her service is possible only through Radhika, through her feelings 
for her beloved. Whatever learned Tulasi, she learned from Radhika. And Tulasi doesn't want to serve Krishna alone, individually. He wants, she wants to serve Krishna through Radhika's feelings. And this desire gives her expertise in service. These desires and these connections, emotional connections with Radhika gives her, gives her expertise in service. And also gives one more thing, closeness. And because of this closeness, Tulasi is jokingly fan Radhika in a one way, giving Krishna pleasure, and then he is also serving in another way that her bodily fragrance comes in his nostrils. This kind of expertise can be learned only through the deep emotional connection with Radhika and her Nitya Dasis. And desire of Manjaris is not to serve Krishna alone, but through Radhika's emotion. And because of that, they are becoming expert in this service. In order to relish these pastimes, a devotee must awaken his swaru. Mm -hmm. Even when a person like me is in the right environment, like living in Raja, it does not work. The mind is so stubborn and crooked. In material consciousness, nobody can approach Radha and Krishna. One must enter into Svarupavesh. Bhuta Shudhi. Identification as a servant of the deity is also required during deity worship. Svarup. Avesh is the Bhuta Shuddhi of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Mm. During mental service, one must awaken one's Swarupa. And this is similarly required while practicing other limbs of devotion. A practicing devotee should always identify himself like this. I am Radhika's Kinkari. So, we will try to explain, but actually repeat these words. Where Baba is very clearly saying that all these beautiful 
sweet pastimes, all the beauty and sweetness of Yugala Kishore cannot be experienced and relished in the bodily consciousness of life. For this, person, sadaka, needs Svarupa Avish. And through this Svarupa Avish, his heart will be full of light and sweetness of Yugala, Kishore Mutual Love. In this Svarupa Avish, it is said here, Buddha Shuddhi. And this is the goal of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And what is the goal of Gaudiya Vaishnavas? To become Radha maidservant. Ultimate, final goal. So, whatever limbs of Bhakti Sadaka is practicing, Whatever, Shravana, or Kirtana, or Smaranam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam, should be done through this Svarupa Avesh. Then it is proper following of Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas. So only endeavor of sadaka is to identify himself, stay in this identification fixedly. I am Radha's maidservant as much and as long as he can and practice these different limbs of Bhakti. Now we are listening. Someone can listen, Shravana, these beautiful words and sentences and descriptions of Lila through bodily consciousness or through Swarup. And this is two completely different levels of experience and relishing. So Acharyas are encouraging us here that we should try to practice bhakti through spiritual identity, Swarupa Vesh. Because bhakti ultimately cannot be practiced, it should be relished. And this relishing is possibly only through spiritual identity. Radha and Mohan are spiritual, transcendental persons, and they don't have anything what is material in their forms, in their names, in their pastimes, in their qualities. So to approach someone who is completely transcendental with spiritual senses, Sadaka has to have spiritual senses, spiritual form, spiritual emotions, and do spiritual seva. And this is the reason why Acharyas are giving us advice, try to do whatever you do through your spiritual consciousness, awareness of your spiritual body. 
And if you forget, don't worry, come back again. <laughs> then come back again. Five minutes, six minutes, 15 minutes. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Because this is the sadaka. Neophyte. Beginner. And slowly but surely, attachment for Radhika will arise. And this attachment will bring strong, intense emotions. And through these strong, intense emotions of Bhava or Rati, meditation, bhajana, and all practices will be more deeper and deeper and deeper. So this is the Buddha Shuddhi of Gaudiya Vaishnava to become Radha maid servant. All Buddhas, all senses has to be purified, all emotions, all urges which are so strong, like ghosts. <laughs> has to be purified through meditation of on Ishtadev and on Swarup. Please, Gurudev, save your foolish disciple. I'm reading Bhagavad in Hindi. I find that this Buddha, there is seven or eight type of Buddha. And this control to the human. I was so surprised. Still, I have a book. I only think that one Bhuta, one ghost cat, people will become very crazy. The seven, eight ghosts are, if cast to you, how you can escape with that? One ghost can be made very complicated in life. So our Acharya, Say, Bhuta will never leave you. If you not come to your Sarupava, wow, how oh, special gift they give us. How much you want to, to go to clean that, to throw it out, because one, two, three, four, yes, seven, eight are there. So you have to run away from there in your Sarupavish, where the Bhuta will deserve. You will go in your speech or body. Bhuta Suddhi, Suddha Brahma. Suddha Sarup, you are living. That is Manjari, Radha, Dasi, Kinkari. That is Gaudiya, Vaishnava. You are right, give us Utas. Escape out, run away. This is not one Bhuta. Layers of Bhuta. So, my cannot remember which type of Bhuta, but it's written. This is technical thing in my mind not accept. So, but it's a seven Bhutas or there are eight Bhutas. That was beautiful realization. And 
So this is the reason why Baba, like you said, Guru Dev also is playing Buddha Shuddhi. Pure. That is the our constitutional position. <laughs> Buddha can attack. <laughs> yes. That is the beauty of consciousness. Is a pure spirit and divine. A practicing devotee should always identify himself like this. I am Radhika's Kinkari. No one can delight Swamini and Mohana as much as the Kinkari. Ah. That is the no, 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 no one, one can delight. Can delight. Mm. No one. No one. First she establishes their meetings, which makes them very happy. They are so pleased with the King Kari that they give even themselves to her. Please share Guru Dev on this. To explain it with a feeling, as to develop to live in this feeling, how long and how much I can do it. No one can delight Swamini and Mohana as much as the Kinkari. For she actually establishes their meeting, which makes them very happy. They are so pleased with the Kinkari that they give even themselves to her. Srilila Shukra has said, we cannot see any other object of worship than the dancing feet of Krishna in Vrindavana. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj has written in his Saranga Rangada commentary on this verse. We do not look at any other object 
of worship. Then the jewel-like young couple of Vraja that is devoted to dancing in Sri Vrindavana. Can you repeat first what Lila Shuka said and then Krishna Kaviraj. Sri Lila Shuka has said, we cannot see any other object of worship than the dancing feet of Krishna in Vrindavana. So this is the expression of Saki Bhav. And Krishna Das Kaviraj is giving his commentary on these words from a different Bhav, different angle. Please. Krishna Das Kaviraj says, we do not look at any other object of worship than the jewel-like young couple of Raja that is devoted to dancing in Sri Vrindavan. So this is the Manjari Bhav. Again. Shri Krishna, Shri Lila Shuka has said, we cannot see any other object of worship than the dancing feet of Krishna in Vrindavan. And yeah. Shri Krishna has, Shri Krishna Das Kaviraj has written commentary on this verse. We do not look at any other object of worship than the jewel-like young couple of Vraja that is devoted to dancing in Sri Vrindavana. Lila Shuka wants that his heart... Oh, sorry, Gurudev. All right. Lila Shuka wants to that his heart enlighten dancing feet of Krishna in Vrindavan. I'm very proud of you, my dear. I take three time to listen. You understand me what? No, no. It's your mercy, Gurudev. I don't understand anything. Understand will feel your brother. Radhe, Radhe. I'm very slow. Not forget, my dear. You bother to me. <clears throat> the loyalty of the Manjaris goes even deeper. Allegiance to the great words of the Goswamis leads to a steady wakefulness of one's Svaru. Sriman Mahaprabhu gave the Goswamis the duty do bhajan and in this way teach the world. So this is the clear instruction 
of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Do bhajan, relish by yourself first, and then teach the world, be merciful to the world. It was instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his associates, and they fulfilled his desire and instruction. They relished bhajan, they got all experience, and by through the years they developed more and more and more experiences, and they put all this experience in their Mahavani books, so that we, beginners, receive some drops of their syllables in these books and try to practice our bhajan as much as we can. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu relished Radha Bhava, then he relished Manjari Bhava, Unat Tojwal Ras, and then he said to his associates, please now give to the others. This Una Tojwal Ras, Manjari Bhava. And everyone is free to take it. He doesn't look on qual qualifications, but only desire, strong desire. Do bhajan with loba, do bhajan in Svarupesh, do bhajan focused on Ishtadev, and try to help others. Because it is also bhajan. Bhajan Kriya. Oh. Mohana's desire now also arises in Swamini and Hari takes all obstacle to Radhika's union with him, such as shame, fear, and opposition away. The word Sharingatan in the text also means that Swamini makes Mohana fit once more for pastimes in the Shringa Rasa, the erotic flavor. Swamini has strung a flower garland, but there was no way to bind the ends together so she binds them up behind his neck. Then she comes up before him and asks him, how do you like your garland? Mohana smiles slightly. Although he tries, to find words to praise Swamini's craftsmanship, he cannot express himself. Their chests meet each other when Swamini tries to fix the garland 
behind Mohana's neck. And she bends over his shoulder. Because of this movement, the garland gets smashed. And Priyaji says, Just see, I have ruined your garland. And starts stringing another one. Swamini is decorating Shringaritan, the embodiment of spiritual erotic flavor, Shringaras, and thus immerses him in Shringar Ras. This is Kamadarshi. So many way of meditation of Kam. Let me see Gurudev, please. Gopinath. While she puts a crown on Mohana's head, Mohana smiles slightly. Oh, what nectar! I cannot allow, allow that to fall and be wasted, Swamini says, and goes forward to taste some of this nectar by kissing him. When she does this, Mohana's crown also falls off and she must put it on again with the help of Sri Rupa Manjari. Tulasi is astonished when she sees how expert Swamini and Rupa Manjari are in decorating. Just then, the vision ends and Sri Raghunata rolls on the bank of Radha Kuna crying pitifully. Tulasi prays for Darshan while Swamini decorates Mohana. O Saki Rupa Manjari, without your grace, the Kunja Seva cannot be attained. Please, always give me the shade of your lotus feet. In an enchanting cottage in Akunja, on the beautiful bank of Radakum, you and my mistress Radha lovingly and diligently decorate her heart's lover, Vrajendra Kumar, with different floral ornaments, so that his limbs become very beautiful. When will I make my life useful by seeing this intimate pastime with my own eyes.
Thus ends of the verse 69. Rather. Rasamayi, there is one request from Kishori and Kanai to repeat the words. Yes. My dear friend, Rupa Manjali, when will I be able to see you with my mistress, decorating her dearest one with flower ornaments in the Kunja cottage on the bank of her own lake. Since there are no question, I have a hundred as usual. Karangabaya, what is expertise in spiritual world? We know what expertise, expertise, we're expert. We know about expert service in material world. We make the good foods, we make the good temple, we carry out the rituals. But how are we expert when we're in spirit, in sarupa, Vesh? So what comes to me immediately, actually what you said on the end. <laughs> Expertise is coming with development of Swarup. The more Sadaka is fixed and identified I am Radha's maid servant. The more expert he becomes. But this kind of expertise in spiritual world, like you said, is the result of expert expertise in love, devotion, you say. and expertise in material life from bodily consciousness is coming from desire for ambition. So this is the difference between ambition and devotion. And we always have to be very cautious when we are doing seva, are we doing from our ambition, bodily consciousness of love, or we are doing, trying to do from the spiritual consciousness, I'm made servant of Radha, and that is devotion. Without practicing, After Buddha Sudri, you 
cannot say lies. We have to do it out of Buddha Sudhi and to feel it. Till Buddha is covered, it's not become preserved. And then we behave like it can be. We leave the so many lotus feet and we go in under control of others. That is Buddha. To be under the control of senses, bring person... As they are, they are my dear, you cannot calculate that. A kind of surrender, Gurudev. And brothers and sisters are also there. Family is there. So why to go in details of negative things? What you want to do? Only you know this blockage has to cross by taking shelter of some. One to see the negative side, one to feel always in positive side. <laughs> so the positive side, Gurudev, is Raghunath. He's saying, let my heart be attacked by the sweetness and beauty of my beloved Radhika and her beloved. Radha and Radha Stasi Mandiri. And all the associates of Radha and is Pujaniya, Pandaniya, respectful because I'm the smallest The spiritual practice with no negative, I, I imagine that, I just imagine as putting the heart in a place with no limitation, no block, no block on the heart. To feel it, Baba writes the highest words. You cannot add it and find the words more than that with you. I just one one small thing just came. Oh, I was just meditating on. Udhavaya's uh, question that what is the uh, first of all Radhe Radhe what is the perfection and Udhavaya said in material world we have to do right I have to learn how to cook I have to learn how to be good in this I have to become an expert and then I was feeling what is the expertise in our spiritual practices, then Gurudev always says, when it starts happening, 
when Leela starts flowing in our heart, then we come to that perfection. It, it's happening without effort anymore. It's happening. We can connect anytime to our soul consciousness and, and be there. So I was feeling, wow, this is all part of mercy, actually. You know, even perfection is an act of grace. We're totally bound by dependent on this mercy. So I just I just felt to to share this. And then I inspired my work. <laughs> <laughs> I know just because they are not <laughs> I love your question, Adam Villa. Mm. I was also meditating on that. I would like to share continue flow of Gopinath, that how do we, how is that process? And I was feeling perfection is in spiritual life is when any moment we are only thinking, how can I please my Swamini? What does she need? Mm -hmm. What does she need? And when we come out of our spiritual meditation, and in material meditation, we are in the material world, we are cooking, we are cleaning. What brings us back in is the same. What does my Swamini need right now? How can I please her? So if we are feeling the beautiful Leela, Rasamayi Didi was just sharing with us, when we are in Swarup consciousness, what now does my Swamini need? Who will, who will collect those flowers that she needs for stringing that garland? Mm. Who will hold Mohan's hair when she has to string it? Somebody has to hold the hair up. <laughs> Maybe Mohan will start to shake and he will perspire. Who will dry that sweat of his neck before she puts the, the garland? We have to do, no? <laughs> yeah. Who else will do that? So when we are in Swarup conscious, now our perfection is to know each and every single step what will happen next and to be there and to do that. That's our perfection, to be ready. And when you come out in Sadak there, it's the same. It's no difference. We have to be in every moment ready to serve. And... <laughs> That service, that meditation brings us back in again yeah. to the group. So it's no, it's just flowing, you know, <laughs> in mm. and out. We have to flow with that flow. And then another was in that sense is opposite of ambition. The only way, the only way we can remain in that flow is when we are really, really, really the lowest of the low. <laughs> I have to lie on the ground of Vrindavan, on the dust, and I have to allow Swami to put her feet on me. If I stand up, she cannot put her feet on my limbs. She mm. cannot give me that mercy. Yeah. So in material life, that's our perfection. When we are so humble, then our ego only will run away <laughs> then only we can protect from our ego otherwise we are always going in the senses and all these negative vibrations what Guruji was mentioning so thank you everyone you are so much inspiring thank you for, for letting me share. it's the run of mercy <laughs> I got so inspired by listening to God. And I want to ask my God person sisters to also help me. But there's in Prima Bhakti Chandrika, there's this beautiful saying, Sadhane Bhavi Be Yaha Siddha Deha Bhavitaha. Se Raga Patara Upaya. It's saying the practice of the Raga Mark is whatever I do in my Sadak Deya with feeling, Bhavibe, with feeling, that's the ingredient. Whatever I do, 
and go figure out the thing. Like whatever I think, when I think 24 seven of her, then that will be attained also in my spiritual Swarup consciousness. It will be automatically transferred there. So then both become one, my material existence and my spiritual become one. There is no difference anymore. And like Guru Dev always says 24 seven, and I was thinking, like, no, how 24 7 do we do? It's too ambitious. <laughs> but actually, the key is she has to be always there 24 7. Whatever I do, even if Guru said, if I go to the toilet and brush my teeth, I think for her. And then it becomes perfection, right? Janandaji, Puravani. So just I come to my mind one thing. In the Prabhupada books, Prabhupada used to say, we do devotional service. Our material body becomes spiritualized mm. or Krishnaized. So what do you mean this one? So just I'm hearing Gopinath Vaya and Gopika Didi. This is a mood of service for us like a kinkari manjari mood. If we do this seva in sadaka deha, then Gopinata Bhai is saying, this, this sadaka deha and spiritual body, that mood is kind of merging. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, easy to, to, to attain this spiritual body. But at that time, sometimes we are missing this mood, mm -hmm. like me, you know, so, but this mood is so important. This mood, uh, in other words, kind of eagerness or kind of hankering, very strong greed. So just hearing both of you and and uh, I, I just come to in my mind this uh, Prabhupada saying, oh, that's oh that makes sense now. Before you know, I understand, but I'm not understanding. But now I'm more clearly. So, Kurde, we have to apply it. <laughs> and it happens. <laughs> the fight happens. Applying in material world. Mm -hmm. Your greed should be happening. You have to feel it that if you apply it, it will be still Muta Sudhi. Muta Sudhi is not happening. Covering is covered, hidden Maybe we can stop here Not and, con <laughs> and continue <laughs> in the same time mm. to flow. Yeah.